Dateline 1920. The Great War has ended after years of bloody conflict and its horrific war machines dismantled. With a tenuous truce in place, the nations of Europa rebuild amidst the uneasy peace, venturing into uncharted territories around the factory. Although the factory has been closed and its wondrous marvels cut off from the world, the surrounding landscape is littered with the remnants of their fantastical mechanical contraptions just waiting to be restored. To the end of the war! And to the best workers a commander ever had. Now, let's enjoy our first harvest in years. <laughs> That's some good shit. <laughs> <laughs> what? Dude, that's your mech? <laughs> oh yeah, I've seen that model. John Deere, right? <laughs> hey, hey. Does it give you plus one farming? <laughs> <laughs> Shut you up. Hey, fuckos! Hey, why aren't we playing Scythe? Because you told me it was a farming simulator and then suddenly you have giant mechs all up in my face using it for a hibachi? My eyebrows only just grew back. The expansion came out. Oh boy, let's play! Get on the payload, you moron! Hey, wanna play side? What's that? It's a farming simulator. Mm. There's also mechs! You had me a brutal mech warfare. No one said that. Every player begins the game with a random faction mat and a player mat. Each faction has its own character, mech design, and unique abilities that you'll unlock as you progress through the game, while the player mat determines what actions you can take and how efficient they are. Hey, I'm Japanese, just like Hana. I think I'm turning Japanese, I think I'm turning Japanese, I really... Oh my god, I get a pet monkey? Yeah, animal familiars were really popular in the 20s. Every prominent leader had one. I am... German. Oh sweet, Axis high five. Anyway, everyone starts with their character and two workers on their home base. Why are the Japanese workers morbidly obese? They look like cartmen wearing a Chinese costume. That's historically accurate. In the 1920s, the Japanese workforce consisted entirely of sumo wrestlers. I'm learning so much about history today. Oh, hey, I made a mix that we can listen to while we play. I think it really conveys the spirit of the game. Thank you. 
Inside, your character explores the land, navigating encounters with locals, and engaging in epic battles between man, animal, and machine, while your workers form the basis of your economy by farming your lands for resources and building structures and more efficient technologies of war that will annihilate untold populations of innocents and desecrate the landscape for ages to come. See? After assigning factions, you may have to adjust your seating so people with tiny arms can reach their faction's home base. Sorry. No worries. Once you've accommodated the genetically inferior, hey. you'll take your first turns moving workers out of your home base so they can start gathering resources to grow your economy. So I moved out of my starting village. Now what? Well, if you take the produce action, every worker you have produces one resource depending on the type of square it's on. Forests produce wood, mountains produce metal, and so on. What the villages produce? More workers. How do they do that? Like, dig them up out of the ground, or...? Oh! <laughs> Alright, well, I let my guys stay at home and, uh, produce. I get two more workers. Okay, I'll do the same. Get a worker. And a medal. Well, that hardly seems fair. Right. Photos are in. We're on mining duty. Group one, pack up. We're heading up to the mountains for months of hard labor. What mountain? That mountain. That mountain there? Yep. That's a sodding active volcano. Look, it's actually erupting as we speak, shooting out plumes of lava everywhere. That's where we're mining. War effort needs metal. Well, what's group two doing? Uh, let's see. They're going to stay here and fornicate as much as possible. Ah! Are you joking? Each resource type can be used to produce upgrades. Wood is used to build structures, oil upgrades your actions to make them more efficient, and- Shut up and tell me about mechs. Okay, you need metal to build them. I don't have metal. I know. Each faction has access to different resources. Until you can cross the river, you're limited to what's available in your starting peninsula. What about Brandon? Eh, he's Japanese. He can do what he wants. I'm Japanese. No, you're Polish. Or Korean. Or... I don't know, you're mixing up a lot of stuff right now. The point is, this game isn't all about mech warfare. Why don't you try adapting your strategy to what you have here? Here's a farm. You could start out by producing food. We do not sew. Well, no metal, no mechs. Unless you happen to get one from a random encounter. Wouldn't be the weirdest thing I picked up from a random encounter. Non-sexual. Oh. Scattered across the board, you'll find encounter tokens that trigger if any character moves onto that space. Each encounter gives you three options to choose from to gain various resources or benefits. Okay, I will move here and do the encounter. Ooh, what is it? Okay, I'm in some kind of farm? Seems abandoned. Which is my Yekabuste? Wait a minute. <gasps> it's a broken down mech! Can I get it working? Well, let's look at your options. You can help an anxious farmer find a missing part for the mech, gain two money and one popularity. No. Okay, uh, you can convince this farmer to sell you some scrap. Pay two money to gain four metal. That would be enough for you to build a mech. What else? Or you could steal the newly built mech, lose three popularity. That's it, I do that. Man, I love how all these encounters have two regular choices and then one total dick move. Like, look at this. Practice your shooting at unsuspecting targets. Threaten to create an avalanche with your bazooka. Salt the earth and force the farmers to enlist. These are great. I know, right? Yeah, they're great if you want to roleplay a huge asshole. Haha, <laughs> got your mech shit, farmer! <laughs> Who's roleplaying? That should do it. What am I? I'm gonna call you Mechie. We're gonna be best friends. I am Mechie. Pop your hatch, I'm coming in. Uh. Uh. So you're team a robot. Yahoo! Whee! Your turn. Well, well, well. Look who's the military power in this region now. Say, that's a lot of food you got there. You know, it'd be a shame if someone came hey, over. Did you know you could trade for metal? What? What? No. George, no. 
Taking the trade action, you can get two of any resource. No idea what you're unleashing here. I trade for two metal and take a deploy action. Neka activated! Okay, deploying that mech unlocked your river walk ability. Now you can cross over to the mainland. Why would you tell her that? You're between us. Good luck with that, meat shield. You could even cross into Jack's territory right here. Prepare to get owned. And you could steal all of his resources and use that to make even more. <coughs> Stop saying things. <coughs> At the end of any player's movement, if their unit's belonging to more than one player on the same space, combat breaks out. Each player uses a secret dial to choose an amount of military power to invest in the battle. For each character in mech that that player has on the space, they may also play one combat card. Okay, Mechie, we haven't known each other long, but if we work together, we can win this fight. What do you say? Teach me to love. Anybody want to trade mechs? Once both players have assigned their dials, they're flipped and the highest total wins. Target eliminated. Don't mess with me. All military power and cards are spent, and the winner now controls that territory with any resources on it. Securing the point. Oh yeah. And the loser's units are deported back to their home base, like a loser. Who's the military power in this region? I prostate myself before you. Are you gonna be a farmer now? Yes. It's a farming simulator. Run! The porters are coming! The porters are coming! Sanctuary! Don't worry, our workers will protect us. I thought workers couldn't fight. Well, they can't, but a conqueror loses popularity for each worker they displace, so they make a good deterrent against warmongers. So what? It's not like there's some sort of popularity contest. Actually, it is. Your end score is multiplied by your popularity, so it makes it much more difficult to win as a brutal warlord or a pig farm stealing mech thief. So as long as we surround ourselves with farmers, we're perfectly safe. See? Farming. But what about this ability, camaraderie? Says she doesn't lose popularity when she displaces workers. She has that? Hiya! The end of the game is triggered when anyone earns their sixth star. Stars can be earned by completing various game actions like building your structures, completing your objectives, or populating all your workers. Not just through combat! GG. Once the sixth star is placed, the player with the most money wins, but everyone gains bonus money based on their star total, territories held, resources, and popularity. I just don't understand why she's focusing us, but giving Brandon a free pass. Well, let's see. Right now, he's over there trying to fight a windmill. On guard! Do I win? It's your own windmill! Why is she still pushing? She already has her two stars for combat. She wants the factory. Anyone who enters gets a new technology, and it counts for three territories at the end of the game. If she gets that, she'll be unstoppable. We need a plan. Whoops, <clears throat> I dropped a piece. Jack, can you... Han's gotten too strong for either of us alone. But if we work together, we can defeat her before I inevitably betray you. Okay. Wait, what was it, Lesbeth? Not important. All right. What about Brandon? Brandon's useless. Oh. 
I mean, Brandon can distract her while we attack from the flanks. Her defenses are shored up, though. How are we going to punch through? We use the tunnels. The Europa Tunnel System connects various regions of the map together by way of a vast network of underground caverns. Entering any one will allow you to travel to any other. That's great, but she has all the entrances covered. She'd see us coming a mile away. For now. There's a structure we could use to help us. If we build mines, we can connect to the tunnel system from anywhere we want. Then we can come up behind her blockade and fuck her in the ass. Yeah! Um, that's my wife. Oh, sorry. Query. What is wife? <laughs> hey, who's this? No one. <laughs> He's adorable. Are you guys friends? No. I want you. Inside me. It's complicated. Okay, we've built our mines. We've traded all our resources for combat cards. And we've deployed every mech we can. Today, we fight for the fate of this world. Fire Europa! Okay, I go through the mines, take the factory, and it... Ah, I think she knows what we're doing. Don't worry, we just have to hold it. Next turn, we end this. All right. Game face on. Game's over. <laughs> what? Yeah, I just got my sixth star. For what? Producing all my workers, uh, building all my structures, I got all my upgrades, uh, maxed out my popularity and my military power. Oh, and I completed my objective. Farming. I didn't even think he was a threat. I know. I like watching you guys kill each other, though. I think my faction mat says it best. My. Fuck. You! Scythe is a different game to different people. For some, it can be a game of conquest. Or a game about being a backstabbing little bitch. Hey! But for others, it can be a game of growth and building. And for some, it's about the wonder of the world and the majesty of every new discovery. Take one and get out. Thank <laughs> you.